Welcome on stage the founders of Matsmart, Ulf Skagerström and Carl Andersson. Well, I'm here for you. Yeah, and this is not Mats Mats boardroom, right? Sometimes, no. maybe. Yeah, we really feel sorry for you guys waking up like this, but is we'll try to do something fun about this. Really glad to see you, though. Yeah. So thanks for being awake, and thanks to Sara and the team for inviting us. It's really yeah. a pleasure to be here. Yeah. Uh, we are at the right place. We Carl, are at the right yeah, place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of. <gasps> that's Carl. That's Ulf. Yes, and. As Sara mentioned, we will talk about our company, Matsmart. Yeah, who actually started about two years ago. And um, neither Ulf or me had non-e-commerce experience whatsoever. We kind of just... It just happened, <laughs> so to say. You got um, the screen there. Oh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so um, what are we actually doing here? Yeah, it feels like we're, we're the new kid on the block telling you professionals how to do stuff, and that's... It's going to be a challenge, but we'll try to give you some takeaways from these two years anyway. Yeah. And of course, we like the context with seeing Zalando here yesterday and Netflix uh, this afternoon. So it's, it's a good stage to be on. Here it is. All right. So um, let's start to look at, despite the, this early morning, I mean, let's look at some insane facts. The food waste is massive. I'm sure that you all ha have heard about this before and you have uh, seen it on, I don't know, TV and read it in newspapers, but it's kind of hard to uh, actually get it, how big it is. Yeah, it is. Some facts, we can't tell them all, but some facts we will share, and that is it. all of you in the audience here, of, of every fifth bag of food you carry home, you will actually throw away. And when you hear that figure, we'll probably feel the way that I did when I heard that first time. First time that, yeah, people probably do that, but I don't. But this is a statistically proven fact. So, actually, we do. It's it's uh, that's the way it is. Yeah. And every, I mean, every carrot brought up, so to say, every 25% of them is actually thrown away without even leaving the farm. And the same goes for like potatoes, onions, cucumbers, and a bunch of other fruits and vegetables. And the reason for it is, you probably all know, this. Yeah. It's and it's not, I mean, the only fault why this is actually is, it's us. You and me and all of us in here, we actually, our demands, what we demand in your normal, I don't know, super, supermarket, we actually, already know how a carrot should look like. And we already knew how, how a carrot or an onion should look like. Yeah. Yeah, so just to give you one more figure is that estimated waste in Sweden every single year is about 1.9 million tons. And that's through the whole chain, with the, as I said, in the households, in the food industry, wholesalers, producers, and so on. And that's an pretty insane figure, just to show it a little bit clearer. Or put it's it in perspective, I mean. Yeah, in perspective, yeah. It's a, it's a bunch of cars, right? <laughs> it's almost 2.3 million cars that is actually thrown away every year. And this is still only in Sweden. And the majority of, is, of it is perfectly good. It's actually food that we could eat. And it's good food, and it's absolutely no problem with it. No. I mean, this is a, a huge problem, as we started to say. And it's not a, um, a local problem. It's a global burning, super important questions that we all need to address. Um, and um, I mean, this is something that we have just glanced upon and, and kind of understood the small details about it. And uh, Mart Smart is a, a little bit of a piece and not the entire solution. Of course. Uh, as Sara said, we have two different figures, said, but almost the same. Uh, the turnover in food industry in Sweden only is around 260 or 270 billions every year in Sweden. So it's a big industry with kind of big wheels in it. 
and there are some gaps uh, appearing. And what happened was that actually you found one of these gaps and started to make a business of it. Yeah. So let's look a bit to, to closer to the idea then. Yeah. Yeah. So our third founder, who should be here, Eric, had a super market or super um, uh, food store um, that he, uh, being in 15 years in the business, he saw every day that good food got to waste. That we were throwing away bread and, I don't know, things that actually could be eaten long, long past its best before dates. What's happened at, at the ordinary supermarket or Ica store in Sweden is that if you go in there and find a, a package of pasta, and uh, for example, you see that uh, this pasta, actually, the best before date passed last week. You go to Eric or your store manager and tell him, hey, Eric, this pasta went out last week. Oh, I'm really glad you said told me that I will take it away and I will throw it. And that is what will happen in the ordinary Ica store. And that is, of course, insane. Yeah. So Eric kind of saw this problem. And at the same time, he saw that his suppliers had kind of the same problem. They were kind of knocking on his door saying, hey, I have a, a problem with some short dated goods. Uh, could you help me out? And in the normal way, people say, hey, I could help you out with a few, or just give me a box or something. But he said, like, I'll take everything, but I will only pay this much. And I mean, this solved two problems. I mean, Eric had something really nice to sell to a good price, and the supplier got rid of his problem immediately. Yeah, so he actually, he flipped it. Uh, so he started to buy the problems, he started to tell his crowd or his, um, um, uh, his um, customers uh, about this problem and he started to sell it and telling them how to eat it and how to use it. And that it actually was okay to eat it before, past its best before date. So just some examples that is pretty obvious probably, but it, there is, uh, of course, seasonal goods that will be a problem for the stores and the producers. For example, Christmas candy. It's kind of hard to sell at Ica in January. Yeah. Or, sorry. No, I mean, at the same time, I mean, imagine buying crisps that uh, taste like capricciosa. It was really hard to sell them. <laughs> and the result regarding just this product was that uh, one supplier had like 120 pallets with capricciosa chips that no one wanted to bought. And mm. we said, we can buy them. Yeah. And what happened was, in our context, we sold them out in like one and a half week. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, these were some of the reasons, but there are a bunch of other reasons. I mean, just overproduction, that kind of where you mis, um, uh, miscalculate how much you will sell of a certain product. Or perhaps a change of labeling, going from green to purple or something like that. Um, oh, or we have a, they have a new commercial with, uh, um, I don't know, with the dot being a, a, a stripe instead. So all these kind of things uh, ends up uh, in, in, in goods that actually they need to get rid of. And there are, of course, a lot of more reasons why, why we get hold of this food. But one of the things that stand out the most and is the most uh, common problem that we have used to, to create a bus around Matsmart is this with the best before dates. Because we actually do sell things that have short or sometimes even past best before dates. And that sounds probably pretty stupid, but the fact is that there are two markings, just to make a short lesson. Uh, there is the best before date and the use by date. And the use by date is the goods that you see to the left on the screen, and that is food that will be go bad in, in a couple of days after the, best, the use by date. But the best before date is actually only a recommendation from the manufacturer, and where they guarantee the exact same quality of the food as at the producing date. So the, the soda water will have the same kind of bubbles in it after a year or two, or the pasta will have the same um, mm, texture chewing, or, <laughs> no texture or something like that. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, you get it. Yeah, <laughs> you get it. And, and uh, it's, of course, totally legal throughout the whole of Europe to sell these goods, and there are uh, absolutely no problem with the food. And we were not from being from the industry, we're kind of scared for this. Yeah, how many will we kill? How many will lose an arm yeah. eating our food? Oh. And but how many will get sick and so on, yeah. yeah. But oh. Eric, who is in his ordinary ICA store, said we have less complaints on our food at Mott Smart than he has on, on ICA. So the, the quality of the problem is, is close to zero. Yeah, it's kind of funny when, I mean, we have forgotten about uh, it just to kind of smell, well, smell it, taste it, and kind of look at it before we throw it away. We just trust dates. And that's a really short history. I mean, we, our grandmothers and so on, they, have, I, they know all this already. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so what Eric actually did, he flipped this around, he started selling this in his store, and, and the customers really, really liked it. Uh, so he started selling um, so much more than he had ever done. But um, so and the reaction from his customers were, instead of coming in twice a week, kind of your normal shopping, they started coming in twice a day just to see what's on this, what's on today, what's on this morning, what's on sale for this afternoon. And they often come up, came up to Eric and asked him, what's, what's going to be tomorrow? What, do, what kind of goods are is coming in? Uh, but the problem was that he kind of had ended up having the same problem that his suppliers had. He had a problem with his normal goods, his normal pasta that was, wasn't on sale and so on. So we understood that this is a great idea, but I'm on the total wrong arena, so to say. Yeah, yeah and so then he, he gave me a call. <laughs> uh, he gave us a call and he said, I have a great idea, but I really don't know how to kind of deal with this. So we, we went there. We saw the idea as well and dropped everything else we did and just felt we have to do this. Yeah. So yeah. during 2013, we actually sat down figuring out, should we do this or not? Do we dare to start this, uh, test this company? Uh, but we found three very strong drivers that we based the, 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 the start on. And that is, of course, is what we've been talking about, the, the immense focus on food waste that has been even more uh, increasing the last couple of years since we started. Uh, and, of course, uh, the passion for bargains. Mm charted airplanes from, from Stockholm down to Ullared just to buying cheap soap, or Black Friday, or Cyber Monday, or you know all these things. And of course, finally, the e-commerce the e for food actually ramped off uh, like five years ago, and we saw that trend is, we want to be in that area. Yeah. yeah. So we saw, we said like, we kind of have, we see the fit. We could make something really good in here. Let's try it, I mean, let's go. So we sat down during 2013, looking at the idea, and on um, uh, January 2014, we actually launched. So we launched an e-commerce site with a, high off um, a broad offering with surplus food with a high discount up to 90%. And we started selling to friends and family, and it started out really good. And then we did a marketing test. Yeah, it was super, super bootstrapped. We had kind yeah. of no money whatsoever. We used the back room at uh, Eric's Ica boutique. He will show you an image soon. We bought this theme for the site for like $40 on some obscure site mm. and just put, up, put it up. Yeah, that really took off. And it really did. We had no clue that it could go this fast. Uh, and so we, Eric, uh, Uffe said something about bootstrap. I mean, the first picture you can see there is in uh, Eric's back room at his store, where we actually ended up during the night, because we had day jobs at the same time. Uh, and Eric, uh, after this campaign, Eric called us and said, hey guys, where are you at? Oh, yeah, we're at the office, Wh why are you asking? I mean, my personnel at the ICA is packing our boxes. Where are you guys? <laughs> So we just kind of had to come over to, to his store and we kind of ended up there every night since then. I mean, working from, I don't know, six till midnight or something like that. Yeah, crazy. And we were worthless. Yeah, <laughs> totally. <laughs> I mean, we didn't know the first thing about packing a box. 
running around, kind of finding film materials. And yeah. We oh. actually didn't have any box, so we went out to Eric's Ica store <laughs> and turned some bread box upside down. And, Can we use this one? Yeah, yeah, yeah whatever, take it. Yeah. So, but it, it, it took off, and uh, yeah. after a little bit more than a year, we moved to a bigger warehouse yeah. uh, down in Katrina Holm, south of Stockholm. And they now have around 5,000 square meters yeah. that we hope will last for a couple of months more. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully. But what, yes. we, what we saw was that uh, much stronger than we ever could believe that the customer actually do love this. And taking this kind of un environmental aura around us, we felt if we do that uh, too much, we have so much to prove regarding our how we actually deliver things, and uh, how we wrap things, and how the boxes are bleached, and so on. Mm. But the customers saw it stronger than we could see that, uh, believe on beforehand, that this is really good. We're doing something good, and we're actually doing a bargain. I'm doing a really good deal, plus doing good. Yeah. And that is very, very strong. So, of course, we used social medias with no money and tried to get uh, us people to like us and have some ambassadors to share what they're doing. And this is just keep on coming. There are whole videos and they're voting, they're delivery and sharing with friends. And this, this has, of course, helped us uh, with our growth a lot. Yeah. And as we said before, food waste being a hot topic and, and something that you have read a lot about actually has helped us a lot. We have been written about in the, uh, the biggest newspapers in Sweden. The Economist kind of wrote about us and, and so on. So this has been really, really helpful kind of getting new customers, of course. Yeah. And getting this spread. I think we have to speed up. All right, let's do that. So, I mean, we started out kind of buying from wholesales and, and smaller sellers. Uh, but today um, we buy from the biggest suppliers, the producer, directly from the producers. So let's keep on yeah. rolling. And, and I mean, we, we early on thought that this could be a visionary picture. I mean, imagine big companies having our brand name in their annual report saying, hey, the, uh, the waste that we have goes to these guys. Uh, and we thought that will happen in, within 10 years or something. Yeah, yeah. it actually did kind of happen in just a few months. Yeah. And today we have these kind of discussions with, with the producers. I mean, there, with every production, there are some misfits or oh, uh, some miscalculations in some sort. And if there are not a perfect super muesli, they can't sell it as a super muesli, right? Because we actually trust the, the things that stand on the, the back of the product, so to say. Uh, and then we can actually help the producers. And these are the products that we call our own white label or our own products. And we have a bunch of these. We have olive oil, we have some misli, yeah, we have candy and, candy and, and, and so on. Yeah. yeah. And, and then one day something remarkable happened. Uh, we were kind of shocked <laughs> because we got an email that we didn't believe. No, it, but it was from, from this guy. Yeah. Oh yes, could this actually be true? No, I said, it, yeah. this is a, this is <laughs> it's a, a hoax. <laughs> yeah, it's a joke. One of those Chinese doctors kind of needing your help. Yeah. yeah. But it was actually true. He, uh, he invited us to join him for a round table discussion with 19 other companies, such as Apple, such as Nestle, such as Unilever, Coca-Cola, blah. And it was kind of, Amazing. So we sat there, and the topic of the day or the days were actually the future of food. Yeah. 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 I mean, of course we should be there. I mean, we don't know the first thing about the future or the food. We kind of didn't know anything about the e-commerce. No. No. But why would he email mail us? <laughs> yeah. But it's actually, it worked, and it was a fantastic day, yeah. and he was a great guy. Um, yeah. Yeah. We had a fast growth. We have to finish see, up in I three see, minutes. Yeah. So. Speeding on. Speeding up, we yeah. had a good start. Yeah. Yeah. And we felt, of course, <laughs> we're on the top of the world. Yeah. Or this is going to fly. And yeah. of course, we felt that people at least think so. Yeah. But we felt something else. Yeah. In reality, it looked more like this. <laughs> yeah. But uh, this is actually true. I mean, it was burning everywhere. I mean, we actually got from, I think it was five employees in December till 70. 70. In, oh, 70 in, 
uh, July, uh, yeah. 60, 60, 70, some, something like that, in uh, somewhere in um, during the summer. So six to eight months later. And as the image shows, everything kind of burned up. The service, of course, went down. The finance system, the issue system, of course, went down. We started with Fort Knox for one people companies. Yeah. Uh, the warehouse, of course, burned down. The money burned down because... Yeah, we got a big sack of money just yeah. <laughs> so went away. It has been a rough ride. Yeah. So we just wanted to share some learnings. And in high there speed. Are, uh, in high speed. And yeah. There are so <laughs> many big professional companies. So this probably appeals most to the startups that are here, but yeah. for you guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so this is our first learning. I mean, when you actually have momentum, kind of use it. Just run for it and then kind of fix yeah. things later. Our only focus in the beginning go was for it. sell. Let's prove that people yeah. like to sell this. Right? Oh. If it looks ugly, that's fine. Yeah. Th just sell. Let's keep it. Yeah. And this is one of our biggest assets. Kind of, how hard can it be? I mean, how hard Running can it be? Running a warehouse. Yeah. Picking things in a box. Yeah. I mean, you should be I can do it. Yeah. My daughter can do it. Yeah, a picture should, could be doing this in like, I don't know, two minutes, yeah. 20 boxes in two minutes. We know Why now not? that running in a warehouse is kind of a mm. NASA business. Why shouldn't we could be in 20 countries within six months? We probably can. Yeah, we can. But of course, we, we realized soon that the, the, all the things for success is in the details. To have the right KPIs for the right, uh, every single bit of the company regarding yeah. how we buy uh, boxes or how we uh, pay the, the postman or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, details, 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 they yeah. always say. Yeah. And this fantastic thing about growth. I mean, as soon as you have kind of found your growth and you have kind of find a level, then you will never be satisfied again. And you will always kind of be running around uh, looking for the next step. Yeah. And it's actually useless being in the e-commerce because it's going around 24 hours a day. Yeah. So we wake up in the night to see, look at sales are doing. Yeah. Do you know the, the app Abundo? Abundo. Skip it. Skip 15 it. seconds. Ah, sorry, yeah. sorry. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so a lot of hard work. Hard work. <laughs> not, not that fancy or glossy at all. Yeah. Uh, and don't do it alone. We, yeah, we're, it we're in this together in ups and downs. Yeah. And we. Five seconds. Uh, <laughs> we really look on this sometimes. Uh, it's uh, actually a former uh, Formula driver who said this once. That if everything seems under control, you're just not going fast enough. Yeah. That's it. That's us. Yeah. <laughs> Any questions? Uh, great idea. Uh, Great cause, obviously a, a global issue. You've conquered Sweden. What's next? The world is not enough. <laughs> Mars. <laughs> yeah, why Mars. not? <laughs> no, but of course we look for other markets and we're kind of stepping or crawling into Norway right now and kind of testing that out. But we're looking to more markets than that. And we have such a good name for kind of international expansion as well. Matt Smerch. Matt Smerch. <laughs> <laughs> we actually also, we, we got a question from, from the audience. Uh, they're asking if you get resistance from brands when selling their products with old campaigns. So could there be a marketing issue? Uh, much less than we thought. There are one big uh, supplier selling this good st Mexican stuff we eat Friday nights. Uh, but there are another one. So, uh, no, actually it, it was uh, much easier no. than we thought. But we were afraid. Will the let us sell their nice brands because we only sell like good brands on the site uh, in our crappy site with this new Mott Smart name. Mm. But uh, it has been almost not a problem at all. They're embracing us, as we said, and feeling that we're really helping us with this uh, big challenge. Yeah, no, I think it's two reasons. One reason is that we, they actually get some positive PR by selling to us. That's one thing. The other thing is that. I mean, in, in a normal IKEA store, you have up to, I don't know, 12,000 different SKUs. We have like 1,500 or 1,000. So the things that they actually sell to us, we sell really fast. We have a really high turnover, and we have different kind of uh, brands and uh, goods every, each and every week. 
And, and this kind of helps them with that we can take a really big volume of a, a smaller SKU, like Capriciosa chips. <laughs> yeah. So a, a last question then. Hands on heart, how much food do you smell each week? Smell? Smell. smell. When you're saying Not sell. That we, we, smell. <laughs> you know, when you're saying about that, we, we've lost that feeling about how the food is really, is it yeah. turning bad or not? Oh, how much of the food we you, smell? You get yeah, 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 sorry, yeah, yeah. sorry. Well, we do test foods occasionally to, at the laboratory, but we, when we send stuff to them, they ask, like, okay, it's not a problem with it. What should we measure? Well, we don't know. Measure something. Is it mm. eatable? And with all the food we have uh, sent to them, there is, it's perfectly good. You know, like syrup or soya, you can probably have home at home for 20 years. And uh, <laughs> it's not, it will go, not go bad. No. Yeah. But of course, sometimes things go bad. And that's, but it's so, so very few items to have. I have a question, though. <coughs> the product turnover is crucial for you. Is there like a, a specific place or a, like a hot spot on your website that you know that the products will be sold immediately? <laughs> Good question. Uh, as we said, we are no e-commerce e guys whatsoever. Oh. We we'll launch the site, and how the, the items are pre uh, published on the site is in time order. Mm. So we, we have some low-hanging fruit to, to uh, squeeze and uh, convert the site better. Yeah. So we don't have these. We would like to have them. Okay. So we will have to find that. Yeah, then. you have to yeah. look for <laughs> that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Congratulations to an amazing business idea and to all Thanks. the success. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.